Hello everyone. So next type of hybridization is sp3b hybridization. This is formed by the intermixing of 1s, 3p and 1d orbital. Now here we understand that s is 1 so that is s is taken 3p so px, py, pz all three are taken. 1d we know that d uh, is of five subtypes. So out of these five which d orbital will participate or intermix in the formation of sp3d hybridization if we calculate the percentage character we get 20 percentage s as we have seen earlier uh, we can calculate the percentage that is total is 5 if we want to calculate s percentage 1 percentage 1 part of s out of 5 so 1 divided by 5 multiplied by 100 so we get 20 percentage s similarly for p 3 part of p out of 100 so 3 divided by 5 multiplied by 100 into 100 so in 100 parts how much part of the p is present so that is 60 percentage p and 20 percentage of d character is there in sp3d hybridization now sp3d hybrid orbitals which are formed are directed to the vertices of a trigonal bipyramidal arrangement here we will see that all the positions are found to be different so five hybrid orbitals that are formed are uh, at different positions the hybrid the hybrid orbitals lie in a horizontal plane that are inclined at an angle of 120 to each other are known as equatorial bonds or equatorial orbitals and the remaining two orbitals that are located in the vertical plane at 90 degree angle to the plane of equatorial bonds or equatorial orbitals are known as axial bond. We will understand this from this structure and example that we take. This point we will take later on. Axial bond length is somewhat more or greater than the equatorial bond. So these five hybrid, how these five hybrid orbitals are formed? There are two non-equivalent sets. The first set is formed in XY plane. We can understand this as uh, it is formed by the combination of those orbitals which are on the xy plane or they lie along the x axis or y axis. So we can take here, see we have total 5 s, px, py, pz and d orbital. So which d orbital is to be taken? If you want to identify that in one set, we say it is in xy plane. So xy plane consists of s, px and py combination. This gives the formation of a trigonal arrangement that is the equatorial bond right at 120 angle to each other. Second set is formed along the z axis. So we can take the third p orbital that is pz which is along the z axis and the z square we can take so that we have one hybrid orbital above and one below. So this is the trigonal planar arrangement. These are the equatorial bonds which are located or uh, these are at minimum repulsion at 120 degree to each other. So it is a trigonal arrangement and the other set that is formed along the z axis will give one set above, one hybrid orbital above and below. That is we, we have written that it is a vertical to the equatorial this is in one plane and this forms at an angle of 90 degree with this see these are known as the equatorial bonds and these two are known as the axial bond we can understand this with this structure and the example of pcl5 phosphorus pentachloride if we take and the hybridization if we see in phosphorus pentachloride, phosphorus in its ground state, we can write the configuration, atomic number is 15. So we write neon 3s2, 3p3. In its excited state, 5 half filled orbitals and PCl5 hybridized giving rise to sp3d, 5 hybridized orbital, which can now form a bond with the chlorine atom giving the formation of PCl5 molecule. So we, we have here two types of bonds, two non-equivalent sets. These you can see in one plane, these Cl, 3Cl and the other two are formed by the axial bond. Now here the important thing to understand is the axial bond length 
in sp3d hybridization is somewhat greater than the equatorial bond length now this we can understand by looking at the structure that this cl atom gets the repulsion by these three chlorine atoms whereas the chlorine which are located at the equatorial bond equatorial angle these will get the repulsion by only two chlorine atoms and what happens is this chlorine atom gets pushed above because of the repulsion exerted by the three chlorine atoms in comparison to the chlorine atoms that are located at the equatorial bond because these are this will be having repulsion only from the two atoms whereas the bond or the chlorine at axial position will have the repulsion from the three chlorine atoms and hence the axial bond length is found to be little bit more than the equatorial bond length the structure we can see is trigonal and here it is forming the pyramid like structure see it is like this pyramid here if we see pyramid structure right here and here so it is above this pyramid also and we have a pyramid below so it is known as a trigonal bipyramidal now bond angle if we see here we have two types of the bond angles one will be 120 degree between the chlorine which are located at equatorial bonds and the other is 90 degree to the equatorial bond the chlorine which are present at the axial position will be at the 90 degree angle to the equatorial position of the chlorine now combination if we see it will be sp3d with the p orbital of chlorine so this combination five sp3d hybrid orbitals of the central atom that is phosphorus overlaps with the p orbital of the chlorine so intermixing sigma bond formation is the first bond and it is the sp3d p orbital bond angle we can see 120 and 90 also you can say that the uh, angle between the chlorine above and below is 180 these are the axial bond length so axial bonds chlorine atoms gives 180 degree with each other whereas equatorial bond is 120 and 90 degree axial bond with the equatorial bond so this is about the sp3d hybridization one more thing we can understand is pcl5 molecule exists whereas ph5 molecule does not exist or nh5 does, uh, does not exist why so because we can understand this as the electron of any of the atom gets promoted to its excited state when it is provided with some energy okay so here the chlorine atom which is attached is highly electronegative if we see the we know that halogens are electronegative in nature so if we see the electronegativity difference it is more than 0 0.4 0 0.5 so chlorine being a highly electronegative atom pulls the electron towards itself it is it attracts the electron towards itself gives the energy to the phosphorus and hence electrons jumps to the empty d orbital if we take the example of nh5 nh5 central atom is nitrogen if we look at the configuration nitrogen does not have empty d orbital and hence it does not form nh5 because it, it does not have the 2d orbital so this does not exist now if we take the example of ph5 ph5 also does not exist because the electronegative difference between phosphorus and hydrogen is very less and hence phosphorus the electrons of the phosphorus are not promoted to its excited state giving the hybridization sp3d hybridization so that it can combine and overlap and form the bond with hydrogen so this also does not exist because hydrogen is attached and the electronegative difference between these two is very less compared to pcl5 phosphorus and chlorine chlorine highly electronegative energy electronegative difference is there and hence it gives some energy and electrons gets promoted so it can form a bond okay